This is Rachel Chateau with Pride.com. And today I'm speaking with BJ Minor of Hulu's series, Mike. First of all, how are you doing today? I'm so well. I'm so excited to be talking with you. I feel so blessed and um, seen and I'm just so excited. Like, oh. I, I, I don't know other words other than like excited. I've been saying wow a lot on social media. <laughs> and like, I literally had to put in my story. Oh, I'm just so grateful. Like, I can't mm-hmm. think of any other thing to say other than wow and gratitude and blessed. Like, ah, it's amazing. Well, I feel the feeling is totally mutual. I'm super excited to talk with you today. I watched Mike and it is your performance is so powerful. You broke my heart. Uh, You know, how does it feel to have that out in the world now? Something you put your heart and soul into. Um, it's, it's incredible. It's, it feels like it was such an out of body experience getting to watch myself, especially playing such like a, a hyper masculine figure, but also getting to bring so much humanity to it. Like it was literally a role I'd never even imagined for myself. So getting to do it and then actually be alive to see it. (laughs) (laughs) No, because I mean, no day is guaranteed, right? So I even after I shot it, I was like, God, if you just let me see this, I will be so grateful. So actually getting to see it and share that space with um, my friends and family who watched it with me, it was incredible. Mm, That is incredible. How did you first, you know, get the role? Like, how did that come about? It's a crazy story. So I uh, got it through a self-submission. Oh. Um, Yeah, I had so much hesitation. One day it was just like on Actors Access, Hulu was looking for a young Mike Tyson. Um, and I had been told I kind of looked like young Mike, but I didn't I didn't really see it for myself. So I just had so many reservations. Also being a queer non-binary artist, I really thought it was just a shot in the dark. But at, eventually I was just like, sis, you're already paying for the subscription. So just go ahead and submit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I did and I got the audition. And the same week I turned in my self-tape, I had a director session with Craig, the director. So <laughs> what an experience. And all my yeah. friends, every time I told someone that I was auditioning for Young Mike, they would get goosebumps. So I just felt like spiritually and in the universe, everything was pushing me towards that role. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it was kind of meant to be, right? You know, right. And all those things have to come together in order for it to happen, especially with something like a self-tape. That's really incredible. How do you prepare for a role like Mike Tyson? You know, there's a physicality, there is, you know, a manner of speech, there's all kinds of things. And he's so well known, you know, how do you prepare? Um, well, one, I will say it was intimidating. It was very intimidating <laughs> also because Um, My preparation time wasn't what I think people would expect. I had um, a total of 10 days to learn how to box. (laughs) And he's like one of the greatest boxers ever. Um, So I had 10 days, but I had four amazing boxing coaches. And then for the voice, I had three voice and dialect sessions with uh, my voice voice coach, TJ. So not a lot of preparation, um, but I'm super proud of where we got for filming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it is a, an incredible performance. Like I told you at the top, you broke my heart. Thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, he is, Mike Tyson is someone who looms large in pop culture. He's a complicated figure. I think yeah. a lot of people have conflicted feelings about him. Who was he to you before the role? Um, and how has that, he changed for you as a person since? Um, yeah, so I... One, my dad, so my dad um, was a boxer, which is just another like wrinkle in this like beautiful gift of me playing young Tyson. Um, My dad was a boxer. He uh, stopped boxing after uh, I was born. So I'm the youngest of seven. I have six older siblings. My dad actually trained my other siblings. And by the time I came around, (laughs) he and my mom were both working two jobs to provide for the family. So I was never taught how to throw a punch, but also they were like, this kind heart doesn't make, no need to throw punches. We got you. So I was (laughs) totally protected. Um, But yeah, so I I got to use my dad as a reference and talk to him. And he was my um, segue into some of my research because he's such a huge fan of Mike Tyson. And then also getting to play teenage Mike, I think a lot of people are unfamiliar with that story, like mm-hmm. all of the um, challenges he had to overcome with uh, bullying and uh, being lower class, uh, poverty, um, all of the issues his mom dealt with. 
Um, so I was mm -hmm. glad to not only get to learn that part about his life for myself and my research, and obviously through the script that uh, Stephen Rogers beautifully wrote, um, it also allowed me to like tap into the humanity of him and really go to like really vulnerable spaces. Cause uh, even though I don't think we, I, I learned that we have a lot more in common than I would have known, you know, mm. being a, a black, queer, non-binary artist and also having my own challenges in this industry. So it was so relatable. The work was so relatable and it felt so personal. So I'm glad that it resonated with people. Oh. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, okay, I recently was speaking with Lachlan Watson. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're also a non-binary actor. And they said something I thought was really, really interesting, and I would like to know your take on it, that essentially as a non-binary actor, they're a totally blank slate. They can be anything or anyone. Um, do you find that to be the case as well? Do you feel like being outside the gender binary opens you up to everything? Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Because I, if I had to like pin what non-binary means to me in one word, it's absolutely freedom. And it's also mm -hmm. limitless. Like I'm not bound to the, the social constructions of gender and I'm not stuck between what's man or what's woman. I'm like beautifully floating in between and I can tap into whatever I need to because I've allowed myself to access all of me, you know? So mm -hmm. I 100% agree with that. Yeah, I think that it was such, it really struck me. I had never really thought of it that way before. And I thought it was such a powerful statement, you know, that it's, it is, I think there's a tendency to be like, okay, now you're in the non-binary box. So you only can play this type of character. And the reality is, is there is no box. And I think that people need to like learn that, you know, because it's, it's just, we're so easily defaulting to trying to like box people in. Um, as you said, though, Mike Tyson is a extremely masculine presenting character. I mean, especially in the way that the world kind of views him, like their perceptions of him really and the, the character that he crea uh, crafted is so masculine. Even though you are non-binary and like free, were there ever times where playing such a gendered role was dysphoric? You know, that's a great question. Um, for this, for this, I didn't experience gender dysphoria, even though sometimes when I do get um, cis hetero role opportunities, I do very much feel mm -hmm. that. But for mm -hmm. this, I guess what took over me most was that this was something that was gonna create visibility for my community. Um, and in a sense that created gender euphoria. Um, knowing that it was bigger than me, you know, that yeah. this could not possibly, this could possibly open doors, not just for me, but other queer non-binary trans artists. So that kind of overtook any kind of dysphoria. Oh, that's amazing. I always wonder, you know, about that. And when I was watching it, you know, like so much of it is about at that age, Mike figuring out how, the character that he's going to create, create and so much of that is rooted in gender and knowing that it was being played by a non-binary person I was like this is I need to know about this <laughs> I need to know about your experience so can I ask you a little bit about like when you first came out as non-binary and and yeah. what that journey was like for you oh my god yeah oh it's it was like one of the most beautiful experiences um I just never felt comfortable with he him pronouns so that's kind of where I started like discovering my gender, just never felt comfortable with that. I never felt mm -hmm. comfortable being labeled as just a gay man. Um, so I started doing my research and I was like, where do I fall? A lot of my friends are um, trans women, but I knew I wasn't um, in a space of where I wanted to like medically change my body. So mm -hmm. that journey was, um, I wouldn't say difficult, but definitely a little confusing until I came across the term non-binary and it just like, hit me like a ton of bricks in the most beautiful way. It felt like so spiritual. Like I just remember like sobbing those happy tears. Like, ah, uh, finally, like I make sense to myself. So I could finally start loving myself the way I needed to, you know? Um, so I just be started becoming more comfortable with how I present myself, started buying dresses and skirts, which has been so much fun. Painting <laughs> my nails, beating the face, you know? And just depending on how I feel that day is how I present myself. And it's been such a blessing and so cool. Oh, that's so great. You're, you're trying to make me cry again? <laughs> again? <laughs> I love you. You're so cool. <laughs> you too. 
<laughs> um, did you ever have concerns though when you were coming out? I know people have talked about in the past, you know, concerns about what sharing your gender journey journey would have on your career, or did, were you ever counseled to keep it quiet or to downplay it in any way? Um, I'm very blessed to have um, a supportive family and um, friend group that literally just accepted me the second I said it. Uh, I had lived such a blessed life and uh, I just really wish more queer people could experience it. I have been just so uplifted and protected and loved for just being me. Um, I also have a queer representation. My managers are called Queer Up and they represent all queer artists. So I've just been so blessed to be able to like occupy spaces that affirm me and uplift me. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I haven't had, thank God, any gay traumas. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not everybody's story, but I think it's no. also so important to hear that it's possible to experience like a very like, seen, visible, and appreciated life. Um, and right. I'm so grateful to be there. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that is a really powerful story people need to hear because like, I think there are a lot of stories of people overcoming trauma, mm. which I think absolutely is an essential story and people need to know that there's coming back from that kind of thing. Yeah. But if you know that trauma is a part of the bargain, it's even harder to like come out and be your authentic <laughs> self. So having stories like yours, I think are really inspirational. Thank so you. I'm glad you were able to share it. Um, do you feel like things are changing? Like you said, you have queer representation and you're, you, you know, do you feel like there are more opportunities or people are um, creating more space for trans and non-binary work? Absolutely. Um, like some of my artists. favorite artists to watch are trans, queer, non-binary, MJ Rodriguez, um, RuPaul, Billy Porter. Uh, there's just so much like, the community is big and they are like making such a statement in the industry and it's so cool to get to like add a wrinkle to that story so i definitely think the opportunities are coming and i think even with this booking alone um mm -hmm. our eyes are on the community in such a, a a beautiful way that uh to not put us in the box and to give us those opportunities and you'll be so surprised of the art we can create so absolutely i definitely think we're making pivots in the right direction mm, that's good to hear because sometimes it can feel like things are so hard you know like yeah. to hear uh, you know someone who's in the industry say that you feel like that's changing is really I think uplifting and I think that's really great um I also saw that you did something really cool which was the Ulta Beauty Pride yes yes <laughs> which I thought was beautiful can you talk a little bit about that oh my god that was so cool that was literally one of my favorite shoots ever uh, the makeup was so on point. If I could beat my face like that every day, I would. Like, I, I need to learn. It was, I just felt so powerful in that makeup. And uh, I love, I, I love Ulta. So mm -hmm. getting that opportunity, wild. <laughs> it was wild. It was just so cool. It was the best team. They put me in the best clothes. I felt like such a badass. <laughs> um, I felt like the queer superhero I always wanted to be. Like, it was just so magical in all the best ways, working with also other, like, queer and non-binary artists that were also on set, cast as models. It was just, like, so cool. Like, wow. Like, our faces are not just in Ulta, but also, like, in Target stores where queer kids are going to be walking by and seeing something they can relate to. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. That is just so wild. And to think that, like, they're going to see my face with, like, eyeshadow and be like, I relate to that person. Like, right. something inside me feels like this is family. And that's mind-boggling like mm -hmm. i feel so blessed to get to be a part of something like that let alone be a vessel used for something like that it's <laughs> like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm always kind of blown away by what that must or curious about what that must like be feel like to be the person you needed to see you know what the, the kind of the mind games of that and in a good way you know of being yeah. like I needed this and I am this for someone else. It's gotta be pretty incredible. It's still sinking in. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So, Wait, it's I mean, still literally sinking in. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously the sky is the limit for you. You've done Mike, you've done this Ulta Beauty, you've done, you're, you, there are no boxes for you. What is next? What have you got going on next? 
Um, so I just wrapped, um, <laughs> I just wrapped um, a feature Christmas film, which was so much fun because, so just like working on Mike, I get to work with absolute legends like Harvey Keitel, um, Olenike who played my mom, Russell Hornsby, um, awesome directors like Craig and writers like Steven Rogers and a showrunners like Karen. But uh, the black community will know there's a movie called Friday mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's mm -hmm. an actor in it named Faison Love. So it was fun to getting to work with him on the Christmas movie I just finished. Um, so that was fun. Like just literally getting to work with people that I grew up watching is so cool. But you know, I'm 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 dreaming big. Like I've I've read online things like uh, one day there could be like a, a non-binary James Bond. Like yeah. I'm just dreaming big. Like who knows? Yeah. I'm not gonna allow myself to be put in a box. There could be a non-binary Marvel character, which I already know. I think I, if I'm not if I'm not wrong, I want to say like Shea Kool-Aid just got cast for something in Marvel. So yeah, <laughs> it's just like. The sky's the limit. Let's go. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I need you to like high kick through those ceilings because oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. You are a delight. Mike is an incredible project. You are a highlight in it, which is saying a lot. Um, and I can't wait to see this Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Have a great day. You too. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us today, BJ. If you enjoyed that, be sure to subscribe to Pride's YouTube channel and visit us at pride.com.